with meeting day on the Tuesday, you want to do the 40 hours, actually it's very difficult. It's like before we meeting on Wednesday, we trying to do 40 hours, we have a big issue because a lot of things over the weekend could change. So I agree, if we're using a, um, the technology, we can shoot it out much faster. But at this point, I'm very happy about those kind of agenda centers that are on the website. So you can go check. But um, I think it, after the, the technology got um, implemented very carefully and very usefully, then I guess we could do no uh, sooner than that. Again, meet twice a month and on the Tuesday is very tough. I think Anshika, we do a uh, diligent to do the best to get on the Okay. Um, agenda. Uh, and Mike would start this one. A consent agenda groups items deemed routine matters into a single agenda item that is approved as a single motion without discussion. Yet many items on the consent agenda exceed the everyday government operation expenditures. What would you propose to improve on this process? Starting with Mike. Okay, so you're asking about items that are placed on the consent agenda or, the, or bills that are over 3,500 or your just regular consent agenda? Well, the consent agenda, I think, the, it was streamlined this year just to make things a little bit more efficient so we're not, it makes things, it makes them, otherwise we're reading things way too long, it goes on, the meetings are just go on and on, but the consent agenda should be, it should be more accessible for the people to understand and understand where it is, how it is on the website, there's something called open government. I wish our town would do this, and I think it's something that it's very um, positive. Other towns do it, but open government puts the consent agenda on the front page of other other of other towns and allows people to see exact. Very makes it easy to read. Makes it so it's not so hard to find. But I think that the consent agenda should be um, accessible, transparent, and uh, understandable. Eric. Yeah, so I'm, I guess I'm a bit confused. It simply lists a number of the different items and very simply, any committeeman would just, and it happens all the time, I would like to pull line item number two for discussion. So in theory, most of the things on the consent agenda don't require discussion. But as it happens all the time, you simply pull the item, you discuss it as adults, we can hear discussion, and you can either pass or not pass based on that. So quite frankly, I, I don't I don't know what there's much to change on consent agenda. I think it's pretty straightforward. Thank you. Jolie. I will go to other towns to how they operate those kind of meetings, how they uh, address uh, the um, agenda. So and then go from there. If there is a room for us to improve, yeah, things um, resident bring up this issue so we should look into if there is a room to improve. I remember a long time ago, I saw the workshop and, and the regular night meeting um, a long time ago, but I'm not quite sure how this is going now. So how to educate residents, how to read those um, items, understand the agenda, I think that is part of communication, effective communication should go. I look at this as a question addressing really organization. How to run the meetings, how to discuss issues. I am absolutely open to modifying the process if that's what's going to work. The next question is about the library. And it would start with Eric. Uh, do you believe the Homedale Library Foundation set up at the request of members of the township committee and or township employees and run by residents of Homedale should be financially transparent to all the residents of Homedale. And two, this is specifically questions to Mike and Eric. Are you aware of how much the foundation has in its fund and if there are any outstanding bills in connection with the library that we would be obligated to pay to Bell Works Center? 
Uh, two. So the question but the, these two questions are specifically yeah, to these folks. I, I don't think I'm going to need two know the Okay, yeah. So, look, when it comes to the library, just to remind everybody, as we were going through all the development with Bellworks, one of the things that became apparent is that we had a free lease, but there was going to be a build out, and it was a substantial build out. So we were able to negotiate with Ralph. I sat in the room with Ralph myself and was able to work out where he would contribute a million dollars, uh, which was wonderful. In addition, afterwards, Ralph really put on a fundraiser for us. He does it once a year and he chooses a charity. I was not part of that library foundation. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that foundation has given 60 or $70,000. If I had to make a guess, uh, I would say that they made a quarter of a million to 300,000 based on the event, and being that I run a lot of events and I know how much they can make, uh, that would be my guess. And I have no idea, I don't sit on that board, I don't run it, um, I've been disappointed. Recently received a letter from the library uh, requiring some funding and they're waiting for information from the foundation, so I would, I'm just disappointed that there's not more you know, funding coming from the foundation, being that Ralph drove the fundraiser. It should be really simple, here's the money. Um, but perhaps there's something that I don't understand. Thank you. So at the end of the day, I'm happy the library is there. Um, I, I was not on the Township Committee with the Library Foundation or the library when those discussions were taking place, but I have nothing to do with the Library Foundation. I was never involved in it. I was never part of anything with the Library Foundation, so I, I think, of course, every foundation should be transparent and open with their finances, especially when it's benefiting our residents, but I have no idea what, um, who, I don't even know who's on the board completely. I don't even know, I don't know. It's not part of, I have so many, I wear so many hats in this town, I can't keep track of the Library Foundation too. Thank you. Do you ladies have something you want to add to the question? Well, I think it's extremely important uh, that uh, there's transparency with with the foundation. I mean, it, it's on the library. I don't think there's even a question about that. How was it in that fundraiser helping up front? And how much money you raised that day, I have no clue. But I worked hard for, for that event. Um, it's a shock. I don't know what happened. But again, just like him, he's not really in that position, we have nothing to provide. Uh, I hope we can have the money to make our library more effective uh, money. Um, I'm gonna read the last question. There are other questions that I have here, but Karen wants us to be done by 8.45. So if you have any other questions, that you want to address to a particular candidate afterwards, just you can buttonhole them uh, politely and talk to them. But I'm just uh, going to ask the last question of all four of them because it's kind of a general question. Um, and then they will have their final statement. The question is, what are you, your to-do list priorities once you are elected? What are your plans for addressing these priorities? And how are you going to fund these priorities? And that would start with Chung Lee. Fire safety and awareness is my top priority. Again, I do not want anyone as the painful experience as I had 40 years ago. The only thing I have with me is a bag of piano books because I went to the practice room at school. And I come home, everything gone. So I do not want that. And I want to work very hard with fire chief, with township committee, everybody. Um, we do have a $5 million on, um, on site to do improvement. So, and we have a plan line up there. I'm very happy to see, but I want to see it come true. Not just on the paper, talk and talk. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think we hit upon a whole bunch of the priorities already. Um, obviously, the fire safety, how do we maintain uh, our taxes without them going through the roof? How do we continue improving our school system? 
we also need to maintain the connection between our government and you folks. Because if we don't have that, nothing works. And that we have to look at along with transparency. And I, again, I don't understand why we have this disconnect, why there are so many feelings in regard to lack of transparency, but we need to correct that. There's also several other issues that we haven't even addressed. There's an opioid ep epidemic. We need to make sure that we're well prepared to protect our children, our teenagers, our college students, our, our folks in general. Why do we drive down the street and see graffiti written buildings? Thank you. So public safety, infrastructure, recreation, and environment. Those are my priorities, but I also think we need to be more aggressive in environmental conservation with preserving our open spaces in town. There are no shortage of developers that wanted to come into this town and try and build where they want to build. And I think we need to be more aggressive in protecting our town. That's why I'm working with the Environmental Commission to make sure we have an inventory of properties that are ready to be able to be preserved with county and state grants. Our fire safety, of course, yeah, that, but it also includes our police and EMS. Also, it's, those are three very, they work together. It's very important that they continue to work together. There are things we do, can do without even raising taxes. It doesn't cost anything. We can give our firefighters things like, I hate to put that yellow card on. So <laughs> we can put the, we can do things like increase low step to the maximum. We can give them free membership to the pool club. We can get, get them, finally get them class A uniforms. I'll stop at that, but I can go on. Thank you. I'm gonna go back to the original five things I talked about. Bell Works, it is 83% leased, but only 50% occupied. There's a lot of work that's gotta be done. They've gotta hold up for their hand of the bargain with a lot of different facilities, so staying on Bell Works. Number two, we're gonna to continue to preserve land. Not only preserve the land, but abandoned properties. I've been on a mission for the last nine years to handle the abandoned properties, and speaking of that building with graffiti on it, I was very happy to see uh, Bob Fay gave me a building, a, a demolition permit, and that house on Homedell Road is coming down. Public safety, we are gonna spend the appropriate money to make sure that we have the best volunteer fire department in all of New Jersey. Four, community events. Events like working with Bell Works for the needy. This was a real passion of mine. We've created jobs for some of the kids, the special needs children in Bell Works, right through the school system. I spearheaded that piece. Number five, communication. Things like Home Dell Connect, getting a new website. These are critical things to make our community closer and more well-knit. Last thing I want to mention, AAA rated. Only two communities in Monmouth County, 20 in New Jersey. That works a big part of that, AAA. Okay, so you have your final statements and we begin with Kim. As I indicated in my opening, I've spent my career coming into situations as an outsider, helping strangers come to a resolution. I help bring people together to reach a happy point. That's what I want to do. Homedale has been fantastic to myself and my family. It is a great place to be. I want to continue helping Homedale be that great place. I'm a political outsider, but I'm a Homedale insider. Why vote for me? Vote for me for just that reason, or support me for just that reason, because I'm here for you folks. So I want to thank everybody for coming out this evening. And again, I want to thank Sue for putting together uh, this evening. I would suggest in the future that we do longer time because it's so hard to answer these questions and to, to like under a minute. It's very tough, but consider that in the future. But at the end, I, was, I would just want to say there's more information about me in the back. Um, if you want more information about my biography, about um, who I am, what I do, what I've done. Um, but I just want to say that as a public servant, I have a responsibility to the people of Homedale and only the people of Homedale. I have an, a responsibility that we, make, that we stay strong, united, and positive, <coughs> and it is with the highest respect that I ask for your vote on June 4th. I will never 
I will never apologize for putting Home Bill's children, families, and taxpayers at the forefront of my public service. Please vote. Thank you. Mike, you still have to give me your 10 seconds. Thank you. <laughs> So, nine years, nine years of coming on Tuesdays, I've sat on the planning board, I've subcommittee, all, just about every single subcommittee is part of the township. I've also coached basketball, football, soccer, baseball in this town. I volunteered for a number of different events. I've, I've helped out now with the theater and getting involved. I love this community. And at the end of the day, there's many nights that I come home and my wife looks at me and she goes, why, why? You know, I, I've taken abuse verbally, publicly, uh, in the papers, notes sent to my house, things about my job, untrue, many, many things untrue. And it, it doesn't bother me. I got thick skin, but it bothers my mom and dad who live here, who I love very much. It bothers my wife terribly. So why would I do it? I have a job I love, I have three great kids, because I do love this town. And I do, do want to continue to serve to do the very best I can. You might not agree with everything I do, but I also reach across the aisle. When people have different points of view, I listen. I've changed my mind on times, and I've tried real, real hard to do what I think is best for Homedale. I can remember one of the first times I sat up there, they were trying to raise the, the sewer tax, and I agreed with the, the one Democrat at that point. Nobody liked that, but it was the right thing to do. So at the end of the day, I will always do what's right for Homedale. Thank you. Your turn. My long term commitment and dedication to our beloved Homedale is why I am running for a township committee. I've been serving the Homedale BOE for three terms. It's time for me to look for an opportunity to serve Homedale in a different position. With my training and experience, I am a good fit to be your township committee woman. After years of public service and volunteering with a varied organization and with my educator background, I definitely value the importance of teamwork and will work with all involved township committee members, township employees, volunteer organizations, and all of you, the Homedale residents. I will start with the fire safety and wellness and physical, uh, physical responsibilities and effective communication if I get, in, get voted in. Thank you again for providing this opportunity to present myself and my idea to, tell, uh, to all of you and I ask for an opportunity to bring my experience, leadership, and my work ethic to the Homedale Township Committee. It's time to give our town a fresh, positive spirit and perspective to start in January 2020. Thank you very much for your time, and please vote for me on primary day, June 4th. Thank you. Thank you very much. I should perhaps mention that the schedule that we have been following is that of the League of Women Voters, so that we didn't dream this up over a cup of coffee. This is a copy of what any League uh, debate would entail, so um, you're limited to um, the times that they have found useful over the years. Um, and then last but not least, I have been told that this was left um, underneath the big tent at Earth Day. If anybody <laughs> needs it for tonight, <laughs> come and see me and we'll figure out what to do with it. Thank you, Karen. Uh, before, wait, 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 don't anybody move. Before, does this work? No. 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 Give me one that works. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that sounds on. So, Regina, my co-president, came up to me and said, Karen, why did you not tell people about CELU? You were supposed to do it on your list of four things I gave you to do. So, CELU has been Citizens for Informed Land Use. We have been around for 21 years. We recently just donated a dogwood tree to, in front of Town Hall. 
Um, our mission is to promote informed and thoughtful land use decisions, to preserve our quality of life, to protect our natural resources, and to promote good government decision making based on open communication with an informed electorate and nonpartisan public debate. So if you liked what you saw here today, thank you guys very much. I loved what you said about next time, very nice. Um, please join us. There are forms in the back. You can join very easily by just giving us a check for $40, or $20, right? $20 for an individual, $40 for a family. So if you would like to now applaud our wonderful candidates, I think that'd be appropriate. Thank you all for coming, and once again, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Karen, you filming yourself?